Hey everyone, I'm Mariana, this is Impression Blend, and today I'm starting a new weekly series on my channel in which I'll be talking about select new movies that you can see in theaters or stream online. I will occasionally also add TV series to these videos, like today. This is essentially my curated version of your weekly what to watch guide, or in some cases what not to watch, and I am calling it Weekly Blend. Starting next week, my goal is to have these videos up for you on Fridays. I hope you're excited about this new weekly series and let's get started. Before I jump into this week's releases, I wanted to talk about The Eyes of Tammy Faye, which came out last weekend and is still currently only playing in theaters. I've seen some mixed reviews of this one, but I actually really enjoyed it. The Eyes of Tammy Faye is a biographical drama directed by Michael Showalter that focuses on the controversial lives of televangelists Tammy Faye and Jim Baker, played by Jessica Chastain and Andrew Garfield. As the title implies, the story story is very much told from the perspective of Tammy Faye and is much more focused on her life and experience with all of this rather than anyone else's. We see her journey starting with her childhood all the way to her mature years and the film is actually based on a documentary under the same title. Now I'm going to preface this by saying I did not know anything about these people going in and I think your reaction to this film is partly going to depend on how familiar you are are with the story. Going into this completely blind, I found the film to be very entertaining and engaging. Granted, a lot of this has to do with Jessica Chastain's performance because she is the movie and this role is unlike anything we've seen her in before. I can't even say that she steals the show because without her there would be no movie and this is 100% a lead actress Oscar nomination performance, potentially even a win for her. She's absolutely going to be one of the front runners of the year. There were large portions of the Eyes of Tammy Faye during which I forgot I was watching Jessica Chastain and I'm not just talking about the makeup and prosthetics, her performance is unbelievably transformative. She is fantastic. Another really impressive thing about the movie is the production design along with the costumes. It really transports you to a different time period. All of the vibrant colors, patterns, textures, and fabrics give the film a distinct look, almost like you're stepping into a different world. I will say the makeup is a bit hit or miss. It really works on Chastain, but when it comes to Andrew Garfield, it's inconsistent and can make him look a bit off depending on what age they're going for, which actually took me out of the movie a few times. The film also definitely skims over some things, which is unfortunate and that's where most of the criticism comes in, especially from people who are familiar with what really happened. This is something that became a lot more obvious to me when I was looking into the true story after watching the film, but even without that context, there were parts of the eyes of Tammy Faye that really felt like they needed to be explored much further. Here's the thing though, going into this film, you know you're here for Jessica Chastain in this larger than life leading role, and from that perspective, it absolutely delivers on its main promise. Is it a flawless film? No, it's not, and the closer you look at it, the more you realize the writing leaves a lot to be desired. But is it a good time? Will Chastain sweep you off your feet with her charisma, energy, and theatrical singing to the point where you'll be willing to look past some of the movie's flaws? To me, the answer is a confident yes. Because of this, my rating might be a bit higher than you expect, but I do think that the entertainment value and the lead character's personality are more important than anything else here. So with that in mind, I'm going for an 8 out of 10 for The Eyes of Tammy Faye, and I am confident that we'll be hearing about this film again when we get into the awards season. Moving on to this week's releases, let's go ahead and talk about the elephant in the room, Dear Evan Hansen. Yeah. 
The film adaptation of the critically acclaimed Tony and Grammy award-winning musical under the same name, starring Ben Platt, who originated the role of Evan Hansen on stage, is out in theaters this weekend, and unfortunately, it's not a movie I can recommend. The story is about a high school student, Evan, who suffers from severe social anxiety and ends up being caught up in a misunderstanding that grows into a very big lie following the suicide of one of his classmates. I'm going to cut to the chase and say I just don't think this story transitions from stage to screen very well and it really doesn't seem like a lot of effort was made there to begin with. When you watch the movie, by far the best things about it are the music and the singing. Considering most of it is from the original musical and performed by Ben Platt himself, you can't really give the movie much credit for those things. The biggest problem here is the writing and how little it does to provide context for the characters. Almost every dialogue scene in the movie brings it to a halt because it's essentially just filler between musical numbers. And considering the songs that were cut actually gave the story some much needed perspective, the logical thing would have been to transfer that into the dialogue. Instead, what the film leaves us with is a lead character who feels highly unlikable and selfish because we barely get any of that context, while the movie tries to frame him as someone we should feel bad for. This is a huge failure on the part of the script here, which is incredibly surprising to me. First of all, there is source material that should have been used as a guide instead of cutting things from it without any consideration for how it will affect the overall picture, especially since Steven Levinson, who wrote the book for the musical, was the one who wrote the script for the movie. And second, the film is directed by Steven Chbosky, the best-selling author of The Perks of Being a Wallflower, who later wrote and directed the wonderful film adaptation of his own novel, which also deals with mental health and coming of age. I don't know how they failed this musical this badly, but the more I think about it, the more frustrated I get. The funny thing is, so many people were worried about Ben Platt's makeup and de-aging after seeing the trailer, and it's not even that bad. A lot of the actors who play high school characters in the film are in their mid-twenties, so he doesn't really look out of place. The issue is that the story its pacing and presentation do not work, and on top of that, you can tell that Ben Platt is trying to contain his stage performance into the on-camera version, and it just does not match the style of the rest of the performances in the movie. All of this is very disappointing and unfortunate. I don't think this movie is as bad as some people make it sound. If you look at some of these reviews, you might think this is one of the worst movies ever made, and it's just not. Overall, it's surprisingly forgettable and there are very obvious things that needed a lot more work. I'm going with a 5 out of 10 for Dear Evan Hansen and the only reason I am not going lower than that is the music and singing, plus there are some really good performances in there, particularly from Amanda Stanberg and Caitlin Deaver. I just wish they happened in a better movie. Finally, I want to briefly talk about the latest series from Mike Flanagan, which just got released on Netflix, Midnight Mass. I'm saying briefly because I already wrote a spoiler-free review for it, and if you didn't see it, I was posting about it on Twitter. I will leave a link for you in the info box below, but also because I am working on a spoiler discussion video, which should be up on my channel next week. This series in particular is so much more interesting to talk about without holding back. It's actually really difficult to discuss in the spoiler-free format, so the main thing I want to do here here is urge you to watch it. This is a seven episode miniseries. It's a standalone original work. It's not based on anything. It's not connected to the haunting anthology series and it is wonderful. In fact, this is the best thing Mike Flanagan has done so far. The story is set on a small isolated island with a population of under 200 people and this small community starts experiencing some unexpected mysterious 
mysterious events that coincide with the arrival of a charismatic priest. This is a slow burn dramatic horror series that really starts off as an atmospheric dark drama and gradually incorporates horror elements building up to a chilling finale. Here, Mike Flanagan presents us with a thought-provoking fusion of horror, addiction, and faith that's unlike anything he's done before. Wonderful performances all around, particularly from the leading trio of Zach Guilford, Kate Siegel, and Hamish Linklater. I cannot wait for all of you to watch Midnight Mass so we can really dive into the discussion here because this series has so much for us to sink our teeth into. For my rating, I am going with a 9 out of 10. I loved it so much. Once you really get into what's going on here, it is so difficult to pry yourself away from the screen and and once I was a few episodes in, it was so hard for me not to binge the rest of the series in one sitting. Obviously, my highest recommendation here, and if you're picking just one thing to watch this weekend, Midnight Mass should be it. And that's it for my first installment of Weekly Blend. This is going to be how I do most of my spoiler-free reviews from now on. I obviously appreciate your feedback, so we'll see how it goes. Let me know what you think in the comments below. But what I wanted is to have a way for me to tell you about more movies in more detail than I would just in a wrap-up without overloading my channel with spoiler-free review videos. And also I wanted to give you a weekly video series that you could look forward to on my channel. That does mean I am not going to be doing wrap-ups anymore for the foreseeable future. That format just is not working for me anymore and it really doesn't go with where I want to take my channel from now on. But of course, I will still be logging and briefly reviewing everything I watch on my Letterboxd as always. So if you don't follow me on Letterboxd, I will leave a link to my profile in the info box below along with all of my other social media links. Thank you so much for watching this video. Of course, a big thank you to all of my patrons for supporting me on Patreon with an extra special thank you to the patrons whose names are on the screen right now. And I hope all of you are having a wonderful day. I will see you very soon in my next video. Bye.